This has been really, really fun. I'm just going to wrap it up because we're getting late here. But yeah, um, yeah, it's been so fun to talk with you. And I loved your journey. And I love your story and all the lessons and, hey, and your I, philosophy. Hey, I have a great time talking to you as well, man. But um, yeah, so, but I asked this question to everybody and I want to ask you too. So, you know, what's one thing, you know, that as you were kind of getting, you know, just because a lot of the listeners of this show maybe are more at the beginning of their journey than you are. What's one thing that you did at the very beginning of your journey or maybe you didn't do that you wish somebody had imparted upon you? Or maybe if you did it, you just didn't even realize you were doing it that you'd want to share with somebody at the beginning of their journey, like something that, that would have been an eye opener for you? Um, as far as something I didn't do, I tell people, uh, wh- whoever's starting out, whether it's music production or film or you know whether you're a singer or whatever it is um to build your network early build a network and a sincere network not the corny like shaking hands let's collab that type of thing but like sincere network uh of creatives in your like in and around your field like if you're a musician then you know filmmaker illustrators you know other types of musicians other types of producers that are have skills that are complementary and supplementary to your, your own. And um, like when you're starting out, it can seem like the, 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 the whole world is just full of gatekeepers and you want to work with somebody that's above you. You want to work with some, uh, somebody that you perceive as being ahead of you who has a reputation that's more, more or greater than yourself. And you might find that there's always like this, this sort of block that you can't seem to get people to take you seriously. And if you, you, what you'll notice is that people just tend to work with their, with people they already know. And that can seem really unfair uh, until you realize that of course people want to work with people that they already know. And of course people want to work with their friends. And uh, it's a great idea to foster your own network and work with people and come up together with those people so that, you know, five years down the line, you've got, you've got your team. And now yeah. you're, you're, now you're not looking for somebody to give you an opportunity, you know, like every single project I've made, like you're, you're creating the opportunity and you do that by reaching out to other people who are sort of at the same place in their journey, you know, like a filmmaker who's in the same spot in his, in his or her journey or an illustrator that's in a similar spot in his or her journey. And yeah. I wish I had known that like being a multi-instrumentalist guy that, you know, used to fancy, himself as being able to do anything i really neglected to build that team early on and when i uh came to bombay as you may have heard in my story i ended up building this network by accident you know because because of some other sort of events in my life and um yeah i i often hear people complain about how you know they just want somebody who's who's sort of a little bit further ahead than them to just give them a shot and um, what I would say is that you can't really rely on somebody further ahead to give you a shot because people that are further ahead got their own problems. What I would say is, um, you know, build your own team. And then when you get to a point where you can give somebody else a shot, don't be like the person who is further ahead that doesn't uh, help somebody out. Do turn around and, and try and help people when you can. Um, the other thing Love I would it. say uh, in terms of something that I did do is... Um, Make sure you do things other than music. Like uh, if you want to be an artist or if you want to be a creative person, you have to pull from like life. Like our job as artists is to translate life for other people. So if you just kind of stay in your room and uh, just, you know, work on your, your music all day and you don't, you don't have experiences outside of music, then what do you pull from when you want to create something? So, you know, I always say, like in Bombay before the pandemic, sometimes I would just like get a friend or two together and I would say, hey, let's go on a museum crawl. And we would just like go to all the free museums in South Bombay. Um, and so doing things that are outside of music to nourish your your creative muscle and also just your soul. Like you don't have to go with the agenda of, uh, of, of, of you know, oh, the, I'm going to go to a muse- museum and that's going to make me creative go do things that are that that are enjoyable to you that feed your soul outside of music don't allow music to be the only thing that you have because yeah 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 hopefully you get what absolutely i love that this is some great advice and actually the people i was ta- I, I did an interview last night as well with uh, this production duo from la called between and they were mm-hmm. talking about how like being proactive about making connections and meeting new people 
uh, it also just allows them to work with the people they want to work with as opposed yeah. to just waiting for someone to call them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if, if you're just like, okay, look at look, look what I can do, call me and work with me, like, that's a very passive act. But if you yeah. say, like, this is an artist I would love to work with, let me connect with them and, like, you know, try to be their friend, you know, and then and then you get to work with them, then you're working with people that you really want to work with also. Yep. So... And I kind of like that what you said also kind of just ties into that and just like, you know, being a person, being a human, connecting with people and like, you know, getting on the same page as people who are doing what you're doing. Yeah. You know, so yeah, dude, this has been so, so fun. Um, And uh, we'll be in touch. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 you gotta, you gotta be on my podcast now. All right, man, you let me know. And yeah. I, I hope I can deliver. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you will. I mean, I really enjoyed that episode you did with uh, Christian and I'm looking forward to, uh, to listening to some of, uh, some of your back episodes as well. Oh, cheers, man. I appreciate yeah. that. So uh, Arnab, uh, uh, thank you so much for, did I pronounce it right again? I'm sorry. You did. I was impressed. I was just about to say, yeah, you did. did All right. Nice. I'm just, I'm like doubting myself. I have uh, imposter syndrome, (laughs) but um, yeah, thank you so much for your time and for your wisdom and for sharing your story with the audience and uh, we'll be in touch. Oh, thank, thank you so much, Ben. Take care of yourself. And stay safe out there. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Secret Sonics. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Arnob as much as I did. If you enjoyed this episode or any of our other episodes, I'd super appreciate it if you would go to Apple Podcasts and leave us a rating and review. It really helps the show. And if you could share this episode or your favorite episode with a friend or two, that would also really help the show move forward. In addition to that, you can find us on social media. Just search for Secret Sonics. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. And you can email me at secretsonics at gmail.com if you have any comments, feedback, guests you might want to recommend, anything like that. So that's about it for now. Uh, Until next time, I hope you guys have a great week. Stay safe out there and dig in. Bye-bye.